Bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. You know, once again, it's really my, my pleasure and honor to be uh, with you tonight um, in this blessed month um, uh, when, when oftentimes as we're sometimes physically and mentally preparing, uh, definitely for Ramadan, uh, you know, we have opportunities to send salawat uh, uh, on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Um, we have the opportunity to increase our fast as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did in this month. Uh, which would be something uh, excellent for us to do. And, um, and, and one of the very special things that I wanted to highlight for tonight is, is this concept of forgiveness. And this is a beautiful month to go ahead and do that as we, as we ready ourselves for Ramadan, inshallah. You know, um, we want to be able to rid ourselves of anything that's taking up space and to do a, clean, you know, a spring cleaning of sorts. You know, this is definitely a, a, a perfect time because it is spring or, or spring is upon us. Ramadan is coming. And, and, you know, just like when we do spring cleaning in our home, we want to do spring cleaning in our hearts so that we can really reap the benefits of siyam, of, you know, of zakah, of charity, of, um, of our prayers, of, you know, having more energy, having positive outlook on people and individuals and subhanAllah. And really the only way to do that is... Um, is, is by starting with, with our hearts, inshallah. So, you know, I wanted to start by giving, uh, uh, relaying, there's many, very, many narrations of the same concept. I'm going to choose one of them, inshallah. Uh, Abu Musa, radiallahu anhu, he reported that Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, said, verily Allah looks down in the middle of Sha'ban, in the middle night of Sha'ban, and he forgives all of his creatures, except for an idolater, or one harboring malice, subhanAllah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all of his creation except for the one who commits shirk and the one who what? Harbors malice in his heart, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, not make us of those people. We want to be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and you know, uh, what's interesting, the word in, in Arabic for the one who harbors a grudge basically is mushahin. And what's interesting, it's literally the one who fills up you know, when, you, when we talked about the heart again, you know, your heart is filled up with this grudge. It's filled up with this, with this enmity, with this hatred. Um, there's so many negative qualities around this concept of holding a grudge. And that's why it's so important as it fills up your heart. We need to, we need to release it. And we'll definitely talk about that, inshallah, so that we can make space. I definitely want to focus on Prophet Muhammad and how he encouraged uh, this quality very much. And it's Ibn Malik. Uh, he said that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Young man, told told Anas ibn Malik said, young man, if you are ever, if you are able every morning and evening to remove any malice in your heart towards anyone, do so." Uh, then uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Young man, that is my sunnah. Whoever revives my sunnah has loved me, and whoever leaves uh, loves me will be with me in paradise." And don't we want to be with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in paradise? Ya Allah, we, we we definitely want to be. Um, so it, it's so important for us to follow his sunnah and to forgive people, um, which is easier said than done, by the way. And, and I definitely want to leave a few moments, even though we want to highlight Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I definitely want to leave, inshallah, uh, some time just to give some practical tips, inshallah, because it's, it's definitely easier said than done. Uh, and Ibn Malik also reported uh, that he was sitting with uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, coming upon you now is a man from the people of paradise. And uh, he, he was a man uh, from the Ansar uh, whose beard was disheveled by the water of Wudu and he was carrying both his shoes in his left hand. The, uh, the next day, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam repeated the same words and the man came in the same condition. So nothing looks special about him, subhanAllah. Uh, the third day, the Prophet uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he repeated the same thing again about that particular man who looked the same. Uh, when the Prophet stood up to leave, Abdullah ibn Amr followed the man and said, I'm in a dispute with my father and I've sworn not to enter my home for three days. May I stay with you? And the man said, yes. Um, uh, Abdullah stayed three nights with the man, but he never saw him praying at night. Whenever he went to bed, he would remember Allah and rest until he woke up for morning prayer. Abdullah said that he never heard anything but good words from his mouth. When three nights had passed and he did not see anything special about his actions, Abdullah asked the man, he said, O servant of Allah, I have not been in dispute with my father, nor have I cut relations with him. I heard the prophet say three times that a man from the people of paradise was coming to us, and then you came. I thought I should stay with you and see 
what you are doing that I should follow. But I did not see you do anything special. Why did the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa speak so highly of you? And the man said, I am as you have seen. When Abdullah was about to leave, the man said, I'm as you have seen, except that I do not find dishonesty in my soul towards the Muslims, and I do not carry anyone because of the good that Allah has given them. I do not envy, I'm sorry. I, I do not uh, hold any grudges against any of the Muslims, and I do not envy anyone because of the good that Allah SWT has given them. Abdullah said, this is what you have achieved, and it is something we have not accomplished. SubhanAllah. Look at the power and the you know the, the 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 status, the elevation of this of this Ansar, who um, you know was able to clear his heart every night of two things, of enmity towards anybody, so removing his heart from grudges, but also from hasad, you know, from having that envy towards other people. And when you think about these type of emotions, that they're they're very powerful. They're very powerful, unfortunately, in not a good way. Because, you know, for example, you know, you have a grudge in your heart. So you have some type of an upset feeling. That upset feeling can, you know, lead to you constantly thinking about it. Um, that constant thinking about it, rumination of, of this bad feeling can make you have resentment towards the person. That resentment can turn into hatred. That hatred can make you want to exact revenge against this person. So do you see how it festers? And then, then the, the, the problem is that grudges not only affect you, it holds you back. It ties you down. It consumes your heart. But then it's affecting the other person. Um, it's affecting perhaps the people related to them because uh, uh, maybe now you don't even want to associate, you know, other people that associate with that person. Maybe you're telling people in your family, don't associate with this person. And how many times have we unfortunately seen family situations where almost this enmity is like kind of forced upon you? Don't talk to so and so. They've wronged us. They've taken our property. Um, so and so has done this. And so we see that this fitna spreads all, and it all starts with this grudge. So, so it, it's so amazing how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam really promoted this concept um, uh, in, in many different ways. And what's very powerful, if you think about some of the people that he forgave, it's it's a big deal. Uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Remember that Wahshi uh, was hired, you know, was, was, was a slave and he was going to be freed uh, by Hind if he were to kill the, the uncle of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, uh, Hamza. Um, and so during uh, one of the battles, uh, Wahshi, you know, stood above and, and he took his spear and he killed, um, and he killed uh, Hamza, radiallahu uh, And this tore the heart of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, he was so fearful of the Muslims, he hid. But what was amazing is that eventually he actually accepted Islam. And he went to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, 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 Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accepted his Islam. He removed the death penalty for him, uh, uh, accepted his repentance and forgave him. However, he could not look at him and he asked him to never come in front of him again. SubhanAllah. So, you know, it just goes to show that forgiveness can look different does not mean you have to be best friends with somebody who has wronged you. It does not mean that if somebody has abused you or has oppressed you, uh, uh, that you need to put yourself in harm's way. But what we're talking about forgiveness and removing a grudge, it means freeing yourself from that connection that you're forever making between you and the person who has wronged you. Uh, uh, and, 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 and the idea is to sever sever that grudge and what it does it frees you and and even subhanallah you know in the in the world the secular world um uh, victims of some really bad abuse you know really gone through traumatic things have talked about the moment their life changed was the moment that they cut that tie and they removed the grudge from their heart subhanallah i mean it's, it's just again we're, we're we're reflecting upon all of this to, to really absorb the importance of removing um, a grudge, especially in this special time of year when we're really readying our hearts spiritually uh, for the month of Ramadan, inshallah. Um, you know, one of the, the other uh, really interesting stories of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his forgiveness, again, something really, really special, is that uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, um, he had sent a letter inviting one of the leaders uh, the Arab leaders of, uh, of Yamama and Benu Hanifa um, had sent him a letter inviting him to Islam. And his name was Thumama, Thumama, Thumama ibn Uthal al-Hanafi. 
Um, SubhanAllah, due to his anger of receiving this letter, inviting him to Islam, what did he do? He um, had killed a group of Prophet Muhammad's companions. And, and, and that's, of course, you know, that's, uh, you know, very, very tough to, to absorb. That's a, lo- a loss of a lot of people. And now look what happens, subhanAllah. Um, Tumaba ibn Uthal was captured by the Muslim army during a war. He was brought to the masjid uh, where he was restrained. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu um, you know, was ordered that he be fed. He even, he even uh, gave him milk from his own camel, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then he approached Thumama and said, what have you, O Thumama? What have you got going for you? Basically is what he's asking him. And Thumama replied, he said, actually, I have a lot going for me. If you kill me, you kill a man whose blood will surely be avenged. My, my people will get my back and they will take revenge for my, for my death if you kill me. If you are generous, then you are generous to a man who knows how to be grateful. If you are after money, then ask of me whatever amount you like. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, let him be. Yeah, you know, Thumama said what he said, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, let him be. The next day, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam approached the man again. He asked him the same thing. Thumama gave him the same response, and he left. Finally, on the third day, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, uh, told the guards to let Thumama go. And what did Thumama do, subhanAllah? He left the masjid. He made ablution. You know, he made ghusl. He came back. He took his shahada. He, he, subhanAllah, this whole experience really drove into his heart the true meaning of Islam based upon Prophet Muhammad Sallam's character. You know, previously think about it, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent him a letter inviting him to Islam. And what did he do? He killed a group of companions. Uh, may Allah SWT be pleased with them. And, and, and now he is in cap- held in captivity by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now he accepts Islam. Like what happened? Clearly, we see the effect of his character. As Aisha radiallahu anha, she said that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a walking Quran. You know, he, he exemplified the, the qualities and the, cor- the characteristics of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to do, subhanAllah. So look at uh, Thumema's, uh, you know, statement that he made. He said, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah. He says, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I swear to Allah that there was no man on the face of the earth who I hated more than you. Now you have become to me the dearest of men. And I swear by by Allah that there was no religion on earth more loathsome to me than your religion. But now it is the most beloved to me of all religions. There was no country on earth more despised by me than your country. Yet now I love it more than any other country in the world. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Look at the power of you know, dealing with people with grace. It's, it's dealing with people with mercy. You have the ability to punish someone and yet you don't, right? And, 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 you know, he was a prisoner of war. I mean, he could have done whatever he wanted to, but he still dealt with him in a manner of grace, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, showing, you know, his exemplary char- characteristics. And look how this, by Allah's will, by Allah's mercy, you know, softens the heart and turn the heart of this very uh, uh, tough man Mashallah, who embraced Islam. So, you know, in reflecting upon this emphasis that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had on forgiving people, on, on, um, on telling us the importance of, uh, in the middle of Sha'ban, to, uh, that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala will forgive everybody except for those who commit shirk and those who hold a grudge in our heart. It really um, it, it is very important that we take this to heart, inshallah. But of course, some things will come up. Well, you know, it's not that easy. Sometimes what happens in the spirit of everything, alhamdulillah, we're really enlightened. We feel very uh, motivated. We feel very spiritual. And we make the intention to forgive this person. And, uh, you know, whether it was something more minor or something really major or severe, right? There's too many different degrees of, of, you know, what can lead to a grudge. And so, um, um, what happens is that we may go ahead and, and make that intention. We do it. And then what happens, maybe a month or two, or maybe even a year goes by. And then we have something reminds us of this great injustice and, uh, we have a tough time, um, you know, letting go. And then we start to feel bad about ourselves. Was I not sincere the first time I forgave the person? Why am I having difficulty? Me, my, uh, why am I having difficulty? Am I a hypocrite? 
but what is wrong with me? You know, you're a human being. That, so, so there's nothing wrong with you. Um, and, and subhanAllah, you know, perhaps it is the reason why there's so much reward and there's so much emphasis on forgiving because it is difficult. And, um, and what happens is, uh, you know, when we go through this process of forgiving individuals and, and the feelings come again, it just means we need to work on it again. You know, maybe there's something unresolved. Maybe, um, you know, we, we just kind of suppressed the feeling and we didn't really get to, to work out how we felt. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean, by the way, that you have to talk to the person. Um, you can, if that's something that you can do, you say, you know, I, I, you know, we've had an argument for so many years, we've had a disagreement or what have you, I would like to clear the air, I, I, I hope you can forgive me, so on and so forth. That would be amazing, right? And, and, and guess what? Sometimes you may do that and that person may not forgive you, but you've done your part at least. And obviously if there's anything that you need to return or something that you've taken from them, obviously that's, you, you have to do that. Um, but uh, when it comes to somebody that you can't talk to, maybe they've passed on. Maybe it's not safe for you to reach out to them. There can be too many different reasons or the, the situation is too aggressive. Um, this can make it hard to, you know, be able to forgive and move on permanently. So if these feelings come up, uh, you know, as, as one of my uh, therapist friends recommended, you can uh, journal it, you can write a letter to this person, never send it to them, but really express yourself. And of course, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you in this process of forgiveness. Uh, and, and definitely remembering that the ultimate justice lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very helpful. When we sit and wallow in our upsetness at being victimized by this person or being taken advantage of or being oppressed, uh, being humiliated, whatever it is, uh, you know, what we're doing is, is, is we're just surrounding ourselves with this negative uh, feeling. And we're also kind of forgetting, sometimes forgetting the bigger picture that ultimate justice is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody's getting away with anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees everything. And it just might be uh, that we may not see the effects of this injustice, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one uh, who will deal with it in, in the most just way. SubhanAllah. This can definitely help. Sometimes, unfortunately, a grudge can even happen due to a misunderstanding. And this is where husn al you know, comes into play. It's really important that we have a good view of others. Um, it may be that somebody was having a bad day. They lost their phone. Um, they were looking at you with a you know, terrible look on their face, but it, they didn't even see you, subhanAllah. And so they didn't acknowledge you and you felt dismissed. You felt disrespected. Um, subhanAllah, you know, having husn al of others can definitely... Uh, be helpful in in preventing future uh, small grudges from happening, and definitely, um, and and definitely hope uh, helping to clear any grudges that you may have. Another quality that, or another aspect of move, being able to move on is again recognizing this concept that when your heart is full of something, it's not really giving space. You know, oftentimes we uh, take the mistrust or the negative experience or the toxic relationship that we have with one person, we have a grudge with them and that affects all these other relationships and interactions that we have with others because now we're burned by this interaction and now we feel like we need to be on guard. Well, why don't we take the time and address this grudge and, and, you know, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and do the necessary work um, so that we can have more, more positive interactions with other people that we're not, we don't have to be tied down. It'll actually improve our immune system. The more that you are harboring negative feelings, it does, you know, um, uh, you know, raise your cortisol levels and stress definitely, you know, constant or chronic stress is not good for us. It lowers our immune system. It can make us sick. It can actually lead to increased anxiety and depression. And you get into this negative cycle or a negative loop where you're, you know, this negative experience is, is turning you into this, you know, seeing things in a negative way, which then kind of makes a fulfilling prophecy, so to speak. You, you're going you're gonna to be involved in these other negative interactions because you're carrying that pain with you. So subhanAllah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran um, in, in different ways and in, in, in different ayats how forgiving is better. You know, and, and um, so it is definitely something for us to take into consideration, inshallah. So with that, I, I want to see if there's any questions, any, um, uh, any, uh, yeah, Jazakumullah khair, and th thanks for putting the, uh, the, the hadith on there. Barakallah fiki. Any questions, any thoughts um, before, I, before I close, inshallah? 
So if you can either type it in the chat or you can unmute if uh, or raise your hand. Inshallah, if you have any questions on grudges, how to free your heart, mashallah, jazakallah khair for the for all this advice and these reminders, mashallah. Does anyone Barakallah. have any questions? Okay. Okay, alhamdulillah. So so two questions I see. One is um uh what if the person is not Muslim? It is still in our benefit, uh, subhanAllah, to um to forgive them. Uh, because again, it, 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 you know, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do, whether it's through Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or it's in the Quran, it is a benefit to us. Some of it, yes, we don't have that. We don't understand, you know, we don't understand why. So samana wa ta'ana and we, we, we listen and we obey. But subhanAllah and Allah's infinite mercy and wisdom that whatever he has told us to, to keep away from, it is better for us. And whatever he has told us to do, it is better for us. So, so absolutely forgiving a non-Muslim is going to free you from this, from this, you know, invisible cord that's forever tying you to this negative event. Uh, uh, Judy, you uh, raised your hand. Uh, I was wondering because um, uh, lately I've been having like some hard time connecting with my mom. Uh, she's yes, not yes. Muslim and I never really had this hard time. Not sure how it came up. Uh, but I just feel like, uh, like every time I try to talk to her, she has like, she tends to have like, uh, just to be a little bit negative, which mm -hmm. like, um, draws me away from her. So, um, uh, it's hard for me to like approach her and want to talk. And so, um, like, how do I rectify that? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that, Judy. That's a tough situation. It is a very tough situation. So my last I'm glad that you shared that. Um, and you know, the, the thing that I can, um, that I can offer to you, inshallah, is that this is definitely a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and, and sometimes these tests are pretty painful, especially when it involves our loved ones, you know, like our parents. And, they, and, and some of the other you, you guys are reaching out and you're saying that somebody in your family is cutting you off. They don't want to talk to you. Um, what do you do? And, and all I would say is, and especially in your case, Judy, because she's in your own home, this is your mom. You want to be respectful to your mom. It is hurtful. You know, if you can you know, um, it is definitely hurtful, but whatever you can do to, to maintain good character, eventually, inshallah, she will come around. I've seen it in a, in, in a lot of cases uh, where, you know, there's this enmity, whether it's because something to do with the dean, you know, there's a difference. And so all of a sudden they, they feel this almost like a betrayal. That's a strong word, but they feel the sense. But subhanAllah, time and time and time again, uh, uh, you know, these parties that are, you know, they feel this distance, that they're, they're upset. Um, when they see that you're consistent in your good character, you don't have to put yourself in harm's way and grovel, you know, or beg. But to the best of your ability, if you can, you just maintain, you know, respect, maybe check in. You don't have to always, if it's going to be hurtful by um, her just rejecting you, that inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors for you and definitely, definitely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help in this affair to soften her heart, to guide her um, and to rectify this relationship. And and for all of you that are asking, uh, you know, similar questions in, in the sense of well, what do you do if the other person doesn't forgive you? You've at least done your part. You know, if you've reached out, um, uh, you know, you if you have taken the steps um, in, in reaching out and if there's a mutual disagreement, you, you take responsibility for your part. You tell them that you forgive them and they, and they say, no, I don't want to talk to you. Uh, I don't forgive you. You are, um, you know, I disown you or what have you. You know, inshallah, you've done your part in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm not saying that that's easy. That it's definitely painful. Um, so may Allah SWT make it for you, uh, Sister Judy, and for all of you that are struggling with those uh, similar type of situations. Um, uh, somebody's asking a uh, Sister Fatia, if I hope I didn't mispronounce your name, what is the reward for forgiveness from Allah? Allahu Akbar. You know, think about um, when Aisha, I don't want to go over the time. So, uh, uh, ha, ha, Sister Shamira, how much time I mean, do you have? You can have as much time as you need, inshallah. Whoever needs okay. to leave can definitely do so, inshallah. But jazakallah khair, this is great. <laughs> okay, awesome, awesome. Um, uh, the the reward, oh, so remember when Aisha, anha, when she lost her, her necklace uh, and she was traveling with Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi they were part of a big caravan. The caravan had left without her because she was searching. Uh, and, and of course there, she was traveling in, in a hodaj, which is a covered carrier over the camel. She was very light back then. So they didn't realize that she was missing. Uh, long story short, the caravan leaves without her. She's lost in the desert. 
she stays in place, she falls asleep. And one of the companions whose job is to kind of come up from behind and make sure nobody has left anything, uh, he finds her and he brings her back to town. What do people do? They slander her. They said that they must have done something uh, uh, ruining her image, subhanAllah. And uh, one of the key participants of the slander was a relative of Abu Bakr, radiallahu Abu Bakr is the father of, of, of Aisha, radiallahu anha. And uh, he used to contribute, he used to donate to this person who slandered his daughter. And in his heart, he's, you know, he's, when he found out that this person was in, this family member was involved, he said, I'm going to stop uh, 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 making uh, those uh, donations. SubhanAllah, he didn't even say, I'm going to slander him. I'm going to take revenge. He just said, I'm going to withhold the good that I was doing. And the A was revealed after revealing the innocence of Aisha, anha, which is amazing. Um, th- there's an aya, and, I, and I'm paraphrasing that it's the, the people of virtue or the people of wealth should not hold back uh, uh, from doing good. And, 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 and this really touching uh, um, uh, aya in that same, in that same aya where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us and reminding us, do, do you not want to be forgiven? But do, do you not want Allah to forgive you? So, so the quite, so the, you know, the, the, the ask here is forgive others. Don't withhold the good that you're doing, right? Even in this situation, which is very extreme. And, um, um, and, and then reminding us at the end of that, do you not want Allah SWT to forgive you? Yes, we do. We want Allah SWT to forgive us. So, so you're, you're getting the reward of Allah SWT. You're getting, you know, inshallah, the increased forgiveness from Allah SWT. He's, he's, you know, in the hadith, it is saying that Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and, and there's another hadith, by the way, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, uh, um, will, will, you know, re- records the deeds on Mondays and Thursdays, and again, forgives people, except for who, those who commit shirk and those who hold a grudge. So we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. He's telling us that he will uh, uh, forgive people who hold grudges because of the fact it's really, it has a ripple effect. It has a ripple effect on your heart, how it affects you, how it affects the person that you're, you're uh, having a grudge against. Um, and then, and then the family members and the community, so on and so forth, it really has a ripple effect. So that is why, um, it is so important, uh, for this quality, inshallah. Um, so somebody's saying, how do you forgive someone, a close family member who interrupted you when you told them they hurt your feelings based on something they said, the words said still hurt me and I'm trying to forgive, but it is difficult. Jazakum you, Khair, you uh, reminded me of another point. It is difficult. It is difficult. We ask Allah SWT for help in this affair. You know, unfortunately, you know, there's a whole psychology, of course, on how to bring things up. And, and you know, we don't have time to go into that right now. But let's just say, you know, you've really done your part. You've, you've you know, you've told somebody you want to talk to them, you bring something up and they just shut you down. And then I'm feeling even more hurt. Like it's really frustrating. It's very painful. Remember this, one of the ways that might be helpful in, in, in forgiving somebody is actually having empathy for them. Now it doesn't excuse what they've done. Even in some really subhanAllah extreme cases, it does, you're not excusing the person that has done something. But you're, you're trying to understand, well, what is the background? Why, why are they this way? What has happened in their life that has shaped them this way? What makes them not able to see how they've hurt other people? What makes them tough? What makes them uh, so that uh, they're not receptive to um, saying sorry or to acknowledging? Um, so in this way, when you have, you're just trying to understand the other person, it might take away some of that, that, you know, that hurt a little bit when you're just trying to understand, well, you know what, they're ma- what has happened in that person's life that has made them that way? Uh, there's a backstory to everything, uh, you know, and I, and I think for us to, to try to understand that, it removes some of the personalization of that hurt. Hurt people hurt others. So if somebody hurt you, they must have been hurt by somebody else. And again, I'm not excusing it, but that takes some of the, well, you know, it's because of me, they don't like me, they're hurt. Something is going on with them and we don't know. We don't know a lot of what's going on with other people, even people that we think we know pretty well, that we see all the time. But there's just stuff that we don't understand about them. And so sometimes having that lens um, can help with that, inshallah. 
Um, somebody's asking if a blood relative just doesn't want to maintain ties anymore. Should we respect their wishes or still go ahead and check in on them occasionally, even though they will not respond? You know, Allah bless you, Sister Riva. Um, that's a great question. You know, um, Somebody doesn't want to maintain ties. I don't know if it's been explicitly stated, like don't ever talk to me again, or it's just kind of, it's, it's kind of obvious implicitly. They never respond. They see you, they kind of look away. Um, you know, Alhamdulillah, by you maintaining ties in the sense of, yes, you, you check in on them once in a while. Believe me, they see it. They see it. Allah may soften their heart. We never know. But by you, again, kind of like the same advice that, that, that I gave, um, um, Sister, I forgot your name. I'm so sorry uh, that you that you raised your hand. Um, a beautiful sister who said that her mom was not talking to her. You know, making the intention of like I want to keep silatul raham, I want to keep those familial ties. Um, um, those little seeds that you drop, they they can make a difference. And what is it going to hurt from you? As long as you pre mentally prepare yourself. I know this person may not want to respond. I did my part. This is a charity. Wallahi, it can be considered, inshallah, in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything you do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you say, you know what, I, I might brighten this person's day. This person knows that I still care about them, even if they don't respond to me, and even if they don't reciprocate. So, Allahu alam. You don't have to, again, you don't have to, but at the end of the day, all of these things that we're talking about is better for you, inshallah. Somebody's asking, how do you constantly view others in a good light when they clearly do bad things to you? You don't have to see them in a good light. Wallahu alam, right? Again, we don't need to be buddy-buddy with somebody who's harmed us. We don't need to put ourselves in harm's way. It is good to be aware, actually. If somebody has, you know, done, they've, they've very clearly done bad things to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that feeling, right? Like, okay, this person, you, you interact in the way that it is appropriate. If it's close family, you know, you can't really avoid not seeing them. You know, you just at least do proper. You give your salam, but you don't have to constantly interact, go out of your way, you know, uh, uh, constantly be talking to them or being super close. Um, you don't have to see them in a good light, but you can still work on removing that hatred. You know, sorry for them. What happened to them? I don't know. Why are they mad at me? I did my part. Allah help them. Right. And that's the beginning of the journey. And the ultimate justice is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that begins to remove that, that, you know, that process of personalizing that grudge. Something is with me. You know, they don't like me. And then you're hurt, especially when it's a family member. Uh, and especially if there's like a power differential, like, you know, it's, it's like they're your parent or, you know, um, it, it's difficult. But I believe it's our mindset. It's our mindset that can help us in this process by um, uh, uh, sincerely doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leaving the rest up to Allah, inshallah. It was Sister Judy. Yeah, thank you. Um, how do you practice being humble if forgiveness comes easily to you? If forgiveness comes easily to you, alhamdulillah. That is great. You know, it, you know in practicing our deen, there are some acts of worship, uh, like salah, like fasting, that are hard for some people. And, and, but at the same time, Things like forgiveness, husn al you know, thinking good of people, um, being charitable, uh, uh, helping others, it comes so easy. So, you know, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us and all of our efforts. Um, of course, emphasizing the fara'id, you know, we don't want to uh, leave, leave what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us in favor of, of the things that are, are recommended. So obviously we're doing our best but not to belittle the, the, the good qualities that we have uh, and to be grateful for it. Uh, I, inshallah, the gratitude will help us and to stay humble, inshallah. And then always recognize your difficulties. And again, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you in those difficulties. And if everything is, is, is easy for you, then increasing and giving back based on the level of ease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted for you, right? Allah, it, you know, uh, some of the scholars had said the test of ease or the test of wealth is more difficult than the test of difficulty or the test of poverty. Uh, subhanAllah. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made all of these things easy for you, then you, you know, to be grateful for it is, is, is going to be that much more important. And then to act upon it towards others and help those others will be important too, inshallah. Barakallah fikum. I hope I, I hope I answered all the questions. Is there, if there's anything else?